Hello and welcome to Tech Gainers. My name is Chandra and I am a technology explorer. This video is part of Key Clock series and we will learn about realms in Key Clock and Key Clock X. Let's start. A realm manages a set of users, credentials, roles and groups. By default, master realm is provided by Key Clock and if you remember from my first video that we have created initial admin user for master realm only. Now, let's try to relate key clock realms with example of organization. Here you can consider master realm as organization which houses individual realms which are isolated from each other. Now the thought that must be coming to you is why we should create realms when we already have master in which we can manage all the things, right? So in short, how these realms are beneficial to us? Answer is yes realms comes with multiple benefits as the realms are isolated from each other we can use them to achieve multi-tenancy where for each tenant we can create a separate realm so by doing this for every realm we can manage a different set of users clients roles authentication flows as well as themes so we can see that we can customize login page for each and every realm so we'll start by logging into the key clock using our admin credentials. Yeah. So when you click on realm settings, so this is the settings of our master realm. So first tab is your general where it is displaying the name of the realm. Then host name, if you want to give a fixed host name, we can give it here. Then enabled means this realm is enabled. Then next we go to login. So here is the login settings. For example, on the login page, do you want user registration to be enabled? So if you are enabling it, right, then user can directly register from the uh, sign up page. Then edit username, if you enable it, then user will be able to edit the username. Similarly, we have the options for forward password, then remember me. So for the full session, if the, mm, the session is not expired, so even if the user is closing the browser window, then he will be able to log in directly then verify email so if we enable it so after the user has done the registration he need to verify the email then login with email means either the user can use the user id or the email require ssl is another feature which is important where we are saying for external request ssl is required then all requests so for all the requests the request will be served over ssl then none means any of the requests will not require SSL. So by default it comes with external request. Then third tab is for the keys. So these keys are used for various purposes uh, during the token generation or ID token generation. So basically your ID token or the tokens, these are the signed tokens. So these are the algorithms we can see by default RS-256. So the provider is RSA generated okay so here we can see the public key for it and certificate for it and similarly for hs256 this is the kid right and then aes okay so these keys are already generated then uh, passive keys are there then disabled uh, whatever the keys which we have disabled then these are the providers three providers we have seen so HMAC generated, AES generated and RSA. So we can edit them as well. For example, if we want to set the secret size. So instead of 64 bit, we want to set 128 or 256 or 512. We can do this. Then algorithm also we can uh, change. For example, we can use HS 512 or HS 384. Okay. And similarly for RSA generated. So RSA, we have this, uh, by default, the algorithm is RS-256. We can make it RS-384 or RS-512 or even we can use PS-256, right? Then this is the key size. So bigger the key size, the more secure is the uh, encryption. Now, next is the email tag. So here we will be setting our host properties. For example, I am here, I'm just using mailhog to make sure how the email is working. We can give these details. These are the mandatory details we need to give. So we need to enable start TLS and 
you can test the connection so yeah so this is one common uh, issue which we have seen that the logged in user is not having any email registered because while doing the initial admin registration right it is not asking the email okay so what we have to do we need to go to the users view all users and this is the admin so we go here and we'll add the email here for example admin at gmail.com something like this okay we click on save now again we'll go to the realm settings email here i will add the properties localhost port is 1025 on which my this uh, mail hog is running and then send the email address right then enable start ls let's test connection so you can see smtp connection successful email was sent so let's check 8025 it is running yeah perfect so we can see that we got this mail this is a test message so this is just a test message mail so once we are good we can save it next step is for the themes okay so by default key clock comes with comes with base and key clock theme okay so so you can change the theme as well for example login theme on the login screen you can change the layout or the look and feel of the theme similarly account theme then admin console this is the admin console if you want to change the theme you can change it then email theme so whatever the theme applied for email you can change it so i will be creating a separate video on themes for key clock as well as key clock x okay next is the localization so right now we are using a region where english is preferred okay so for other regions where localization is required so we can upload the localization json file and our key clock will work according to that locale and comes the cache part so uh, using this admin console uh, cache tab you can clear the realm cache or user cache or keys cache then next tab is for tokens so you can see that for uh, default signature algorithm is rs256 and we have seen in the key stem so we can change this token as well right so for example ps256 we want to sign so we can do that right then is a revoke revoke refresh token so this refresh token revocation is based on the number of times the refresh token is used so if you are not enabling it then the client can use the refresh token n number of times but if we make it enabled so we can say that after how many times the token uh, refresh token will be uh, revoked for example after two times of the usage right the refresh token will be revoked then again other uh, parameters are there for example session idle time for sso then sso session max how many maximum hours uh, we can give right then client session idle client session max these are the properties which we can change as per our requirement so for example access token life span so here it is a 1 minute so you can change it to 2 minutes or 3 minutes uh, based on your requirement so next step is for client registration client registration is if you are registering your oauth clients right so you will be using this so as per the rfc for this uh, oauth to client registration initial access token is not mandatory it's an optional feature so you can create this token and only the clients who are having this initial access token can dynamically register themselves okay so then we have client registration policies so anonymous access policies are those applied for those who don't have initial access token okay so for example consent required or not then allowed protocol mapper types allowed client scopes for example client who is registering right so we can allow limited scopes as well then there is a for authenticated access policies as well so these are for the clients who are having the initial access tokens and the last step is for the security defenses so for this realm we can have these uh, headers parameters supported for example x frame options so same origin we are saying so using this option uh, like the embedding of this key clock is uh, disabled right if any other origin is there so you can click on these features and it will redirect to the particular rfc this will go to the 
this RFC HTTP header field X frame options it will give you more information about this why we use this okay similarly for content security policy X content type options right X XSS protections so all these value you can set okay so this was all about the realm settings so master realm is by default which comes with key clock and ideally or in production or in any scenario you should avoid using master realm for your applications so this master realm is only for the super admins who can manage the other realms okay so there is an option to add the realm for example if i can go and click on add realm so i can give the realm name for example demo i am saying and we are enabling it so once you click on create so realm has been created and it is auto selected here okay so you can see master and demo so right now we are in the demo realm and realm settings are different for the realms so basically by these realms key clock is providing you multi tenancy okay so for each and every tenant you can have a isolated realm which have its own settings for example you have the settings for email you have the settings for login you have different keys right different clients right and and users as well right so every realm has its own set of all these like clients client scopes roles users so in that ways for example if you want to compare it with the organization right so this organization can have multiple applications correct so for every application we can create a separate realm so that there will be a realm which is mainly or primarily for that application only and there will be a super admin right who can manage all these realms as well so that part we can do now once we have created the realm now what will happen if we go to users there is no user here so how will the admin feature work here right if you want to give this realm to the application team right so there will be one person who will be the admin of this realm so let's add that user for example we are saying again admin is the username so i am saving it okay then i will go to the credential step to set the password for admin so temporarily i am removing because we are just doing the demo here okay so now we have set the credentials for this new admin for demo realm will you be able to access the realm or the realm security console no so for that we need to add more one more thing we need to go to the role mappings okay so in the, the client roles we have realm management okay so we need to select this and we have several roles here right create client impersonate manage authorization so what will happen uh, for admins ideally all these roles should be enabled realm admin so there is one single role called realm admin so we can add this and you can see once i have added the realm admin all the effective roles are pertaining to the roles which were available previously okay so that means this user is now the realm admin okay so let's check this so uh, right now i am signing out of this slash admin slash realm name okay and console slash console so you can see now you are in the realm demo and realm demo is shown over here as well okay so let's try to log in here perfect so we are in our demo realm so now there is a one change right because this user this admin is for demo so here he can't add a realm so only a master realm user can add a new realm this is one thing which we should notice okay so here comes the concept of super admin only a super admin can add a new tenant or you can say a new realm
okay so now this admin can add further users okay so we can go and add users we can go to clients and we can create a new client as well so all these uh, feature he can use or I can access because this admin has been given the realm admin role yeah so this was all about the realms in this video and next video we will see how to add a theme to a realm so here we come to the end of this video thanks for watching if you like the content please share it with your friends please subscribe the channel to get latest videos keep exploring thanks